I've got a great one. My boyfriend wants to lie in his law school application, and it's not okay about being gay. So I think you're going to love this one. Yeah. So he's, you know, basically he wants to get into a really, really good law school, and he thinks that it will increase his odds of getting in. And here's the thing. He's bi. It's it's not even – so. The, the girlfriend's like, well, if you put that on your application, I'm breaking up with you, and then you really will be gay, right? She's really made it her issue. And the guy is like, well, listen, I'm just trying to maximize my odds. There's not a – I don't think there's even a box. I don't know because when I applied to college, you couldn't ask that question. I don't know. I guess they can now. I thought you're not allowed to ask people sexual orientation. I guess you are, but I don't think there's a box for that. Yeah, but – but the odds are, right, that, like, people that are bi, usually they don't count. Like, people don't count them. So I understand why he's saying that. Oh, yeah, she's really made it a huge issue. Well, I just thought it was really – to me at first, I was like, I could see why she's upset, right? She's like, oh, my God. But then when he's like, I'm bi, I was like, wait a minute. Like, it's not a huge – it's not – to me, it's not as big of a leap. He's already messing around with guys. I think that it's always interesting when people will have a really hard stance, but then in certain situations, people will lie. Like, if she was – if she it would keep her out of going to jail, right? If she was like, he has to say he's gay for her not to go to jail, suddenly she'd probably be okay with it. So – you have to think about context sometimes. And it is, I also think, you know, it's just interesting that this is the line. Because I think on every single college application, every single person lies. Like, do you know, because I remember, like, here's one of the questions you had to answer on my my application. was like, what's your favorite piece of art? How many high school students have a favorite piece of art, right? Like, it just straight out the gate, you have no choice because you had to write an essay about it. And, oh, I wrote about Pablo. Here's what's crazy. I don't even know why, but I had a print of Pablo Picasso's Guernica in my bedroom on the wall. So I just wrote about that. I couldn't tell you where I got it or why I had it, but I had, I wrote about it. And I was like, and I knew it was about the Spanish Civil War. That's all I knew. And I just, I think I just liked how it looked. I made my sister give it to me because she's an art, like a really great artist. No, <laughs> no. It wasn't 80 feet by 80 feet. It wasn't like the entire wall, but it was three by five. But it's, I remember this. Oh, yeah. Another, on the SAT2, there was, here was the question was, describe American society in one word. Every single person. No. Everyone did diversity. One of my friends did melting pot. I was like, that's two words that mean diversity. But everyone, and this is 25 years ago, everyone was like writing about that. I, it's not what I, I wrote about apathy. I wrote about how people my age don't vote and don't care about anything. I got it perfect, but everyone writes what they think the person interviewing them wants to hear, right? Like that's why. Mm hmm. Yeah. So it's very interesting when people bring in ultimatums and it's not even about her. If you think about what are the odds? 
what are the odds that he's with him for the rest of his life, right? Can you imagine? He doesn't lie. He doesn't get into the school. And then the relationship doesn't last. He's going to hate her forever. Like she's willing to mess with someone's destiny. And I think that that's the, the thing that's interesting to me here is like how quickly people like, you know what? Um, I will mess with your life based on, you know, something that's not a big deal. Like she's just decided. He needs to jump out of this relationship. And honestly, I mean, maybe he needs to go back to guys. <laughs> okay. Oh, I like that. Okay, here's a secret that men don't know. I'll tell you this right now. Women women date multiple men at the same time. Most women, you don't have to be a full roster girl. I know that's out there. Girls like have 30 guys in the roster. Most women are dating between four and five men at any given time. Whereas men, like women multitask. So they always have like, they always have like the guy in the friend zone. They have the guy that like they're kind of talking to. The guy that's like their short-term guy and the kind of guy that's a long-term guy, right? There's always a bunch of guys in the mix. Men would do this too if we had the option. Attractive men, high-value men do this. But most men, I when I learned this, when I started getting good at dating, I was so shocked because we make this assumption. Here's what I can guarantee you. Yeah. So I think the guy is in the wrong here, 100% in the wrong, because here's a couple of things. Number one, he never said girlfriend, right? They've never even said they were in a relationship. There's no, he never said the word monogamy. He never said the word exclusivity. He never said the word relationship. He just said five dates. Here's a secret. If someone will sleep with me on the first date, she will sleep with a lot of other guys on the first date, right? Like, that's what you know. Like... This is this goes back to one of my core lessons, which is that you have to tell the other person what type of relationship you think you're in, and you have to define it. Oh uh, well, when I was younger, I would always have it as soon as we got naked. I would be like, "Oh my gosh, you want to be my girlfriend?" Like and that's what I used to always do, right? It's I would sleep with a girl, and I'm like, "You're my girlfriend. I think you're the one," right? Because <laughs> I'm just always make that decision at moment. I think that when you decide. I think it's honestly, if you're mature, you'll do it before you sleep together. No one does, but that's like probably the best time. I think that you, when you don't want, when you have this feeling is I don't want this person to see anyone besides me, that whatever that is, that can be on the first date. Be like, listen, sometimes when I'm uh, about to sleep with them, I'll say, listen, just let me know now so I don't act weird afterwards. Is this a one-time thing or possibly a relationship thing? Because I don't want to text you afterwards if you never want to see me again. That's cool. Just I'm still – I'll go for this either way, right? Just let me know which way we're going. And um, some, you know, sometimes people will tell you, and that's fine. Like I've had girls say to me, listen, we're going to sleep together, and then I'm never going to talk to you again. And I said, okay, I accept, right? So – this guy, I think he massively overestimated. He goes, wow, I'm the first guy she's ever slept with on the first date. Like, surprise, you're not. So he's kind of coming to a couple of roots. I really, I really like that it happened at the Renaissance Fair, though. I think that that was probably like, – I see them in their costumes, and so it makes it funnier. It makes it like a great TV show. But the lesson here is, number one, women are dating multiple guys at the same time. They got burners on the stove, pots on the stove. And number two, yeah, and you have to – describe if you think you're in a relationship how many times have you heard about this a guy thinks he's in a relationship and the woman doesn't or vice versa like i had a girl break up with me once 
And I was like, what are you doing? We're, you're not my girlfriend. We went on one date. This is really weird. I was like, you could, you just say, I yeah, I, I had a girl, we went out one time in college to like a frat party and she goes, listen. And she goes, I want to have the talk. And I go, yeah, I am not interested in that. There's a ton of girls here. Let me go talk to other girls instead of having the talk with you. And she goes, I just want to be friends. And I said, oh, I've got friends. They're called guys. It was the coolest thing I did in all of college. Four years of college, my coolest moment. But it was like, why would you on a single date, right? Well, she's, she was in love with one of the other guys in the frat, which is fine. I don't care. So I, there's t everyone brought girls. So why am I stuck talking to you this thing? You don't have to friend zone me. It's fine. I can get over it. But sometimes... And guys do this too. It's not always, it goes in both directions. I've before thought I was dating someone too. And they were like, no, we're not. So you have, until you talk about it. And here's the second thing. You can't just say, do you want to be my girlfriend? You have to say what that means because everyone I've ever talked to has a different definition. Once I started saying to women, they go, do you want to be my girlfriend? They go, yes. They go, what, what does that mean to you? They always say something completely different. So there's plenty of women who don't think girlfriend even means monogamous. I once met a woman who goes, oh, Girlfriend means I don't sleep with anyone besides you in this city. And I said, I said, I have some questions about the in the city part, but that's, that's why you just have to ask. If you ask, people will tell you he didn't ask her. He didn't say what he wanted and he found out the hard way and he overreacted. It's not a big deal. She, he didn't see her sleeping with the other guy. So. Oh, I'm sure it was like a dirty, it was a dirty. Renaissance Fair make out. I've, I've got one for you. Okay, this is a woman who's got some dating advice for men. And I want to see which of these you agree with and which of these you disagree with. Well, this one's going to surprise you. Okay. Some of these are going to surprise you, some are not. Okay, she's divorced, big surprise, and been on the dating scene for five years, okay? And here's number one. Take the lead on the first date. Just make a plan and invite her along. Agree or disagree? Yeah, right? So I'm shocked. I was really surprised that she had a First one's a great one. Second date. Second one. On the first date... Hey, if you can't afford somewhere expensive, don't go somewhere expensive. If you don't have any money, take her for a walk. I thought this was interesting. I like this because she said, instead of going, you know, because I used to do free dates. So I actually like, oh, that one's okay for me too. It's not crazy because the way she explained it was quite good. Like, just don't go somewhere if you can't. Oh, yeah. I used to have these amazing, I would take a girl on a walk to see these three statues and then we would go to an art gallery. And it was like a free date that went really well for me. It was like a master date. Number two, be interested in her. Ask questions and listen to her answers. <laughs> you know, I love that that's the advice. It's like... Oh my gosh. Yeah, I thought that. Here's the next one. I don't want to give you a lecture on chivalry, but get out of the car to greet her. Offer her food first. If you're sharing, walk her to the car, walk her to the Uber, or walk her to the, the door when she's leaving. This one, to me, the way she explained it was good because it's what's tricky is I've known women who get offended if you hold the door for them. And it's tricky. It it has happened to me. But I'm dead. Jump ship. Well, I have had women where I'm like, I care about, I don't care if they don't like me. I just want to know they make it home alive and they've not liked it. So it, there's a big pushback here. I think she's right, but it's unfortunate that women are like, why do you care if I make it home alive? It's like, well, number one, I'll be the first suspect if something happens to you. Okay. So I have a vested interest in you making it home. Right. Um, 
yeah, it's like I just you know here here's one here's the next one. If it's the stage where she's coming over for the first time, please clean up. <laughs> please, especially your bathroom. If she goes, you here's what I like. She goes, clean your toilet and the sink. I'm so tired of seeing bowl stains and grime. I so as you know, the like stains in the toilet. It's like so bad there's like a brown ring in the toilet. So as you know, I actually think the first thing as a guy you should do is take over the bathroom because I think that's like the that's the source of all my confidence is having a really clean bathroom and having control of it. It's the first thing I wrote in my book. Really. Oh my gosh. That's interesting. Yeah. I- if you see a ring in a toilet, it's it takes a really long time to develop one and a really short time to clean it. I agree with that. So I know, but I've known a lot of guys, and I've also known. I knew a girl whose toilet was so shocking, I couldn't believe it. So I just, I know this. I just like this is the first time I've read advice. This I agree with like ninety to ninety five percent. It's shock, right? It's such a surprise, right? It's a major plot twist. Here's the next one. If you're about to sleep together, please make sure you're clean. If you're not sure, go to the bathroom and check your smell. <laughs> like, I know. I, um, yeah. And she even says, like, wa- if, if you're unsure, just wash your downstairs. And don't forget behind your balls this girl is very switched on because we for, that's like i think that's actually probably where the worst smells hide so um i've experienced the most put together men who have a musty set of balls that i won't go near i know okay and last one if you're gonna if you're expecting an overnight guest, please have clean sheets and a fresh towel. She went on a date. She went on a date with a man in his fifties, and his bath towel had not been washed in ages, and it killed it for her. So, these are all things. Yeah. So, I don't think she's. The funny thing is that like this is what the bar is. We all think the bar is so high. Once a woman hits mid thirties, divorce. The bar is like, listen, she's not. She did not ask for balls that smell nice. She just said not bad. She she's asking for neutral. She's asking for neutral. She's not asking for clean sheets. She's just asking for cleanish. So I think this is actually one of the best pieces of advice that I've read, written by a woman in a really long time. It's. That's why I like this one. So I think that a lot of times, so when I did a lot of in-person coaching, the number one killer for guys was this. The number of guys they had, I one time, they have, their house isn't ready. So they're out and they're afraid to bring, their house is so gross. So they're afraid to bring a woman home. I had a guy, first interaction, super, super well-known Russian supermodel into him, ready to go back home with him. And he goes, I can't bring her back. My place is gross. And I wanted to kill him. I was like, are you kidding me? Because I'm training. It's great for my reputation, right? It's great for me to have my students have a great sense. And this happened all the time. You have to, and what it is, is you have to have the expectation. Because what you're saying is, oh, why? You only clean up if you know you have a date, right? That's Exactly. So some of the things... I used to believe in was that your house should always be ready. You should always assume that at any given moment, a model will knock on your front door because it's raining and her tire broke. I've had number two is you always need protection. So in my house, when I was single under all four corners of the bed were two condoms in case something goes wrong with the first one was a two and under both corners of the couch. I don't need to leave the room to go get a condom. I want everything within reach. You just need to think that way, right? You always want to be strategic. Yeah. 
I don't have them on the table, like on display. I have them hidden on my cushion. There's nowhere I'm sitting where I can't reach a condom in my house. And you want to just think it, and it's not even I'm making my house this way for women. You want to think if someone walks in the house, will they be grossed out? Will I lose the deal? And it doesn't take a lot. Like that's what's interesting. You know, the bar is very low. You're not, she's not asking you to add anything to the house. It's, that's the thing is that most guys go on one to two dates a year and they don't know when it's going to happen. So you need to always be prepared because then you're self-sabotaging because you don't believe in yourself. I can just tell you that more than anything else with guys I've trained, it was that they didn't believe in themselves enough. So they didn't have a condom or they didn't have their house clean because they go, oh, I didn't think I would have success. The first time. Yeah, they go, they say things like, oh, I didn't think I would succeed my first time out with you. And I was like, excuse me, I'm really good. Hundred percent. I think a. Yeah, I think confidence for me. My confidence has always started in the bathroom because I like because the bathroom is easy to control. It's a small area. It's very easy to see clean or not clean, right? And then you then you do your bedroom and you do more areas of the house. But if your bathroom is awesome, you have an advantage over like ninety percent of men. <laughs> like if you just don't have a black ring, you're top ten. Uh-oh. Men don't drink that. Men don't drink French water. There's a good chance if someone accuses you of cheating that they're the one cheating. That's usually that's the thing I would there's two possibilities here, which is that she has low self-esteem, which is a problem, or she's up to something. This reminds me, um there's something women can say that guarantees the end of a relationship. It guarantees a relationship will not work out. And it's something along the lines of like, why did you pick me? So any variation of this of I don't deserve you, why did you pick me? You could have anyone. How did why did you choose me? A hundred percent of the relationships where the woman says that the relationship ends, usually within weeks. It's a it's a gear there's no it's a killer. Once you say that, yeah, it kills the relationship. It's the most powerful thing. So if she's anytime you have this, you were leak your low self-esteem. And usually the woman then kills a relationship, not even the guy. She says it. Guys say other dumb stuff. This is something that women have to say. And it and but this situation of like, it's not, I mean, come on, a water bottle is not good evidence. And it's like, it's a bit of a, you have to, uh, Yeah, I think he needs to exit the relationship because it's either low self-esteem or that. If you, I had a, I had a friend who once said to me, he goes, there's no such thing as a woman who's too needy. And so I said, challenge accepted. And I, cause I knew a girl and he, cause he was like, I'm super needy too. And I was like, want to bet? And I, I got it with this girl. They dated. After like six weeks, he's like, dude, I got to get out of here. She's way too needy. It's killing me. And I was like, well, I was right. I found someone who was too, for every person who thinks there's a limit. There's always someone who breaks that limit. So yeah, I think that, I mean, I would, or the third possibility is that like her last boyfriend cheated on her. But even then, okay, now you're getting judged for someone else's crimes. I would say probably jump ship. Yeah, exactly. I say jump ship. I got one for you. I I've been dating a girl for almost a month. <laughs> so cute. 
I really liked her. We had so many shared interests in chemistry and honestly better than any chemistry I've ever had with anyone else before. This is maybe the strongest I've ever felt about a girl. But then recently I found out she's dating multiple other guys. She's got a long-term guy. You know, like we talked about before, she's got a long-term guy, a friends with benefits guy, and this and that guy. And I, and my heart is broken. And my takeaway is that she must not want a relationship with me and doesn't like me that much or not as much as I thought she liked me based on our time together. Yeah. This guy sounds like a weenie. Let's be. Always. You never have perfect. Yeah. Here's the story. Yeah, you should always act like you're competing. And I think that we were dating for almost a month. You know, how many dates did you go on? Because there's the way people talk about stuff. Yeah. Well, how many dates did they actually go on? There's a lot of people. He might mean he saw her four times, right? Or three times. We went on once a week date. She's got a big, I know. He didn't realize he was actually her Friday guy. Here's the answer to this. You have to have a different mindset, which is, yeah, I'm going to win. So here's my mindset. Well, no, you, you always have to play like you're winning. Like a girl would say to me, I remember sometimes if I talk the first guy a girl talks to, I'll talk to a really beautiful woman in a nightclub or a bar. And she's like, well, there's a lot of other guys here. And I said, listen, here's what I think you should do. I want you to go talk to every single other guy, flirt with them, and then you'll be back to me. I said, I have no problem with that. Talk to everyone. I want. You, I said, right now, you think I might be the best guy here, but I know once you talk, and then they don't do it because when you say that, they go, wow, this guy's so confident. Then they don't actually do it. So you can fake it with that. You just have to say, listen, I think that's a great idea. It's the same thing I say when some people are like, oh, I'm thinking of hiring a coach that's a little bit cheaper. I go, that's a great idea. I'll see you in two years. Just know the prices aren't going to be the same in two years, right? You're going to waste two years of your life with someone who's not as good as me. I'm not going to stop you because actually you'll adore me and write the best, re the best reviews I get are from people that hired someone else first. So I can't wait to see you on the other side of it. So that confidence is there. Don't be afraid of competition. Have that confidence. Go, listen, I think it's great you're dating a bunch of people. We've been dating for almost three weeks. Yeah. People, how overly invested are you to get this dramatic after someone you've known for? Yeah, I think that I agree with that. I'm trying to think about it because my mindset is that, yeah, I mean, I expect not all of them to work out, but I approach each one like I could win this one is kind of what I mean. Oh, you know what it is? Okay, so here's what I do now that I understand it. What I actually do is, um, here's my belief, and this is why I was successful. It's a different variation. My belief is that every time a woman re rejects me, it's because of something I did. 
I said something wrong. I said the wrong words in the wrong order. Or I said always every rejection. If I had said, yeah, so I, what that does is that means I can fix it. So I, I believe I can get any woman if I say the right words in the right order. I know it's a crazy belief, but that belief gives me like super confidence. It's like, oh, I just need to figure out the right magic spell of words. The law of large numbers. It's the same. It's the same thing casinos win at blackjack. If you just have that approach, you go, oh, I have to talk to enough women. Someone will like, it's crazy, but it's true. Yeah, that's interesting. I've got one that's interesting. You're going to love this one. It's your favorite topic. Threesome broke me. Husband and wife in their 30s. The husband was asking for it, so the wife got on board. Well, here's what happened. She, she had her first solo vacation, and when she came back from that, she was super horny for him. And then that's when she goes, okay, I think I'm on board with this idea. She's kind of into it. I, it's, yeah, I mean, it sounds like, you know, when, it's, when I hear solo vacation, I also expect to hear the words find myself. I'm looking to hear something like find myself or healing journey. Like one of those phrases, that's like a red flag phrase. We come back from the trip. She's on board. So she joins the dating app, sets up the profiles, manages the dates, meets the women, has dates with him. They finally find one that meets their approval of their whole process. First time, it's okay. It all works out. Like, it's not great because she's, like, shy and nervous. Then they meet again, and everything's good. Then she, they're in a hotel, the three of them, right? They've all slept together. She falls asleep. And then while they're asleep, the husband and the woman, the other woman, have sex again. And she's like, it was so horrible. I froze. I'm so betrayed. It's unbelievable. I don't know. It's like, it broke me. Worst thing that ever happened to me. How am I going to possibly deal with this? I feel like I'm alone. They, second time, they sleep with the woman. They're staying in the hotel, the three of them. She, wife falls asleep. Husband and the other woman start fooling around. They have sex while she's asleep, and she's like, "I was frozen. I felt so betrayed. It was the worst thing that's ever happened to me. I can't." Did she? This. Did she hear them when she woke up with her eyes closed or something? Yeah, she woke up before they started. Oh. They were there fooling around, and she's like, okay. "This is the ultimate betrayal." Then after they finish, oh. and then okay, the woman, the woman has three um, finishes, if you will, lady finishes, mm -hmm. and she's right. like. Mm -hmm. The wife normally can't finish. She doesn't finish very often. Right. So she doesn't have a big O mm -hmm. herself very often. And never three. She's never had three in one night. So mm -hmm. she, as soon as they finish and she hears the other woman finish, she runs to the bathroom and throws up. And she's like, oh. the other woman's like, oh my gosh, I'll leave if you want me to leave. She's like, no, no, stay the night. It's like, <laughs> stay. Oh. And then she's like, the husband is like walking on air. He's like, it was such a confidence boost. The fact that she finished three times, he's like, it made me feel like really good about my skill set. And I mean, it's other than don't do it, right? Once you're in this situation, how do you get out of it? Is this a permanent arrangement now? Did this become a, a thing? Well, I mean, she's like, it broke me. Like, she's shattered inside. She's devastated oh, okay. that they... 
Would she devastated that? Uh, do you think that? I mean, we can't read minds, but would she be devastated that her husband cheated on her, or that the other woman had three finishes? I think that made it way worse. I think that it's like because she's feeling like yeah, she is so I think, sexually. So they made a bunch of rules um, that were one of them was we we do everything together, right? He was specifically one of the rules is before you have a threesome, you do, and they did the right thing. They made a bunch of rules which are specific because you have to say okay. which things am I allowed to do, which things am I allowed I'll tell you right now, if you're in a relationship and you have a threesome with a third one, the a second one, do not finish with the other woman. I'll tell you that right mm-hmm. now, okay? <laughs> that, is mm-hmm. like, yeah. that is always... Okay. That should be uh, the number one rule. You just should know that All going right. in no matter what you do, you finish well, with the woman you're in a relationship with because she will interpret it as oh that woman made you finish and I didn't and it's a whole thing. So this guy they had made a specific rule. So I normally would be on the guy's side, but she did specific they specifically talk about this scenario where she goes, Don't I don't want to wake she goes, I don't want to wake up to you two having sex. She's very specific, and that's what happened. So I feel like because they discussed it in advance, right? He's really like that's not cool. I, he's like, I, I boosted my confidence. Like, yeah, but you guys made a set of rules, right? She gave you the threesome, right? So in this case, I and I can't believe I'm saying this. Because normally I always favor the guy who has the threesome. Like the guy chose short term yeah. pleasure, and it's, it's a very good chance it right. would cost him this marriage. Yeah, because that's right. She's so. It's so I would just want to say that. You, uh, I don't, I don't think you know people can do whatever they want, but I, I don't really think in a lot of cases that uh, bringing another person into the bedroom is the key to a successful marriage or a marriage that's flailing or a marriage where people are bored with each other. I think it's a very poor solution to that problem. So, have you noticed that a lot of these people they try to do a third woman like girlfriendy or like see the second the other one multiple times, and that's it's always that. Where it's like, oh, we saw her a second time. Once, because it changes that dynamic. And this is something I've asked my wife about this. I say, what would be worse for you if I slept with another woman or I told you I was in love with another woman? And it's the second one, right? Yeah. So, of course, it's it the is. feels, right? It's that there was an emotional connection and that he started saying things like, she made me feel confident. I don't feel when I sleep mm-hmm. with you. That doesn't yeah. feel very good, right? So, yeah. and the whole thing is not. A comfortable, happy situation, and uh, if you want happiness and you want satisfaction and you want to have a wonderful life, don't do this because it's just nothing but problems. Yeah, it's it's just interesting because they they discussed all the rules and then he still broke the rules. So this guy made like a big mm-hmm. big mistake. What happens is once you start, I just really think this whole idea of having a girlfriend or like it always, right? We always have these stories. We never hear about it. We just did it once with someone. We never saw the person again. It broke our marriage. We don't hear that very often. And maybe it's just not right. as common, but I think that you have this idea. Like, cause my wife asked you, my wife for a long time thought I had a second family. I was like, I never leave the house. Do you ever think about how bad it is for them? They never see me. I never go anywhere by myself. <laughs> That's why I have four kids. I always want mm-hmm. someone around me, mm-hmm. but, but I care about you more than them. Yeah, so the I, the that's why you see me here more than I, yeah. Like two <laughs> women on their period at the same time or two people mad at me yeah. at the same time. Like I All of that. Yeah, all of that, really. All of the things that go with a relationship. Like the thing I don't want is to like – the intimacy stuff, great. Like sleeping with someone is cool, right? But the rest of it, like to meet someone and learn about her hopes and dreams yeah. and her past and like what she yeah. wants. I don't yeah. – like I get sick to my – stuff. I've already – I don't want to learn that from another person ever again. To me, being married means yeah. I never have to pretend I care about someone that I've just met ever again. So like all of, that's the well, part I, hate. I would say that I, I would say for somebody like in my situation, it's a journey that I've been on with somebody that is never going to be another journey like it. It's a unique journey. And I want to continue taking that journey. I don't want to do it with somebody else. And uh, there's too many issues with it. I, I think a lot of times like they're in their thirties. I think they don't have children. I think these people don't have children. Wouldn't you think they don't no. have children because they're bored and yeah, it's nothing else. This is that serotonin thing you talk about. Like they're chasing a new high, dopamine. Yeah, yeah, they're chasing yeah. that next, chasing a new high, and it's yeah, porn. It has a lot to do with it. I'm sure they both are into porn. You know, yeah, a lot. To do I with um, it. I think that you have to have really clear 
rules and definitions and you can't you're changing things we've been together 10 years or 15 years i think these two people actually they're the only people they've ever been with they they were like high school sweethearts they took each other's virginity and all that yeah stuff. what right. and what happens right. 15 years 20 years later you start yeah what did i miss i think you, know, if you start that's the off, regrets of the maybe yeah. if you start off as like a swinger couple like right out the gate maybe it can work i don't know i'm not saying that it can because but I definitely yeah. know changing things midstream doesn't work. Like that's you cannot change the right. nature of relationship, and you can't change it back. It's so hard. Once you well, to me, the red flag was a solo vacation. Wasn't that the one you said at the beginning? Yeah, I didn't. This was a solo vacation. Yeah, I went on a solo vacation, and afterwards, I yeah, that's, was all that's, into him again. That's bad. I don't. That's bad. Yeah, that's bad. I just don't know. It depends how long it was. Like if it was a weekend, whatever. But it's also like usually when someone's like, oh, "I want to go on a vacation," listen. I like to go on vacation without my kids. Every time my wife and I go on vacation without the kids, we come well, home. that's different. We right? always without your kids, come different back than... early because we miss the kids, and then we come back uh -huh. early, and then the kids are a nightmare. I go, what were we thinking? Let's go right back. Yeah, like, why do we? It's that... What do we miss? I don't understand. I know. Yeah, I I, I used know. to go on trips without my wife early on, and early in our relationship, like work. Well, so early now, on, like, I not... really, even if I'm, I usually like I would much rather bring her like i don't know i just don't it, yeah I, I don't want to be away from my wife i want to be with her i like yeah her. i just it's why be married to someone that you don't want to <laughs> hang out with there you know, so okay so if you want to know how to get this back get rid of that other girl and do naked cuddling every night without having sex for a couple weeks and everything will be fine just like that okay 10, 15 minutes a day. What about the part where this it. woman can't really finish? Is there such thing as a woman who can't have an orgasm? Let's cut with that because I don't know. Well, a lot of women, yeah, there is. But um, they used to call it frigid. They don't use that word anymore. But it's more common, and I'd say that 90% or 95% of women can't come from intercourse. Okay. Not just intercourse, but, you know, they could be in a position like on top or whatever where they can – uh, stimulate themselves and, and, and get off. So, uh, but it's possible she doesn't. I mean, I know women who haven't. I remember we had a uh, student of ours. Uh, he was married like 50 years and they are in their 70s. And they go to their 50 something, whatever, high school reunion. And I, he had been going through our material and he kind of helped her kind of get like it was a switch. She had her first uh, finish. First time ever. In her 70s? And then she had 10 or 15 or, yeah, in her 70s. 73, 74. And then her first, from then on. Now she's like, I well, from then this. on. Oh, my God. They had hours of intercourse. Hours every day. Oh, she was like, it was like she was so switched on. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what, I never know what happens after like a year. People always lose touch with me because, you know, everything's fine with them and there's no reason for them to stay in touch. I totally get that. But they was like, he wrote me three or four emails over that year. I was like, things were just incredible. Just incredible. He's probably dead within a year. Because our methods show somebody they can have it for hours. What's that? He's probably, he's probably dead within a year. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Really. So here's what I dated a girl once who said that. And here's what happens as a guy. You go, oh, I'll be the one guy who finally gives you it. And then when you don't. Yeah, but, I'll be the guy. And <laughs> I'm I, your hero. I think the correct mindset should be. I was actually like, oh, that's. So I don't even have to try. That's awesome. Yeah, all right. You don't have to worry about it. Like, okay. Yeah, nothing to worry about. I just, yeah, yeah, great. I was going to do that. I so I have a theory ways. that I've taught men. I call it the rule of one. Okay, this is really weird, but I always teach men that you should just think of yourself first in the bedroom. That actually, that women prefer that, and that works better. So if you said to yourself, "I don't care," you know, I'll just, you know, I, it's not being entirely selfish because if you're not putting pressure on her she can actually have a better time because she doesn't feel like you're pressuring her to come. Yeah. And actually it creates a space for women. It's actually a lot better so, for everybody. So men work way too hard trying to please a woman and puts pressure on her. There's a lot of bad so. advice. I read this advice. I think it was in a Maxim magazine or something like that in high school or early college. It was like, <laughs> of course you should it would ask be. a woman mm -hmm. each phase. Like, how does this feel? Are you liking this? And that's a mood killer, by the way. Like, oh, how oh, was God. it for you? Did that feel good? Did you? All that stuff is such a mood killer. You remember that? Do you ever hear this one? You know, you're, you're listening to the situation. It's like, do you like it like this or like this? Is it better like this or like this? You know what that is? Is it better like this or like this? You know what that is? 
it's an it's an optometrist on his wedding night. Oh that my was gosh. a joke. <laughs> but that's what they teach you in a lot of these magazines is like, oh, you because you want to really go. And it's it takes you out of it, right? For me it would be the same thing. Well, of course it does. It's like I it now feels like a test. What you want to say, here's the lesson I learned. This is one of my friends taught me this is really good. Say it at the beginning and say, listen. If there's something you like that I'm not doing, just let me know. If there's something I'm doing you don't yeah, like, let me, know. let me know. Otherwise, you're not going to have a great time. You say yeah. that at the beginning so they know it's okay to tell you because some people like stuff, some don't. Listen, some guys like a finger in the butt, some don't, right? That's like a big – some guys absolutely love it. Some guys think it merely makes them gay. So there's a whole spectrum on that one. And like it's better to – you know. By the way, it does make them gay. There's no question about that. But That's why I'm gay. So <laughs> – <laughs> it's just but that's the thing is that there are certain people that there's things they like and everyone likes different stuff. So if you yeah. just establish, I think I, I think you're 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 not going to get. It's good to do that. Okay, it's great. I'll give I'll, something else that I feel is really helpful when you're sleeping with somebody is finding out what their core fantasy is. Because everybody has like a core fantasy. Eventually, they might she might tell you. It's like what she masturbates to, basically, or whatever. And then that's kind of nice because you can use that information. It's always the R word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 90% of the yeah. women I but, asked this, I was, this was one yeah. of my big moves. Or we could be doing it in a public place That's very common Or you uh, know, There's different, so there's different you, variations uh, maybe Of the women I dated Because I asked a lot of women this Because yeah. this kind of yeah. if you want to have a, yeah. If you're a single guy and you're trying to get to a threesome This is one of the ways you plant the seed You go what's your fantasy Oh here's my fantasy You find out the core fantasy and, and you feed it back that. to them Absolutely. Otherwise it was always that yeah. there's Number variations. two is two yeah. guys yeah, and number right. three, one girl I, w- I dated, and this was the good one. She was into vampires, like the cool kind. It was really, but it was so specific. Well, that's it's a little less common. I know, but it was really, really, her thing was like, b- the guy's wearing a billowing white shirt, like a blouse. It's foggy. They're in a garden. There's a fountain. Like, she had a lot of. That looks like a, a cover from one of those yeah, novels. Yeah, she had a whole you know, scene. Front of those... And I was like, yeah. And I was like, let me ask you. Romance and I was like, and I asked her questions. I was like, well, uh, you know, is there blood or is it like. She's like, no, of course not. She's like, you bite, but you don't bleed. I was like, all right, let's do it. So I was willing to try that. So, but if she said, you got to bleed, I'm like, no. <laughs> like, that's yeah, my line. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> that, you know, there's a huge difference between hurts and doesn't hurt. So. All right. So I have a question. There's two questions that have to do with consent. And I think they're very interesting questions. Okay. okay. One's from a guy. One's from a girl. The guy says, I'm in my mid-20s. I've never kissed anyone. I guess he means a girl. I don't. I mean, he's probably kissed his mom or something. Anyway. Uh, been on a few dates. Never ended in a kiss. Right. Okay. Just the moment wasn't there. I'm worried about how to approach a woman. Huh? When it, you know, when I go on a date and there's someone I want to kiss. So is this first, my question first, is this, this a first date thing usually? Second question, I think what I'm na- mainly needing advice on, um, is it a turnoff if I ask her if I can kiss her? Yes. I want to respect boundaries, no. okay, for the women I go out with, boundaries. I just want to see what the consensus is. What do you think about asking her out, about asking her for a kiss or on the first date? That's what he's asking. I thought that was such an interesting question from so, a young man. I kissed my first girl when I was like twelve. It's really a turn off for women because it, it, it <laughs> twenty five is kind of it's just such a that? turn off to, act, to ask permission. Remember earlier the woman's advice yeah, was don't ask off. permission for everything. So, well, you should have a an agreement. You, you what you do is you get a pad with the agreement on it, so you can then you know sign it. She can sign it. You give her her copy. Yeah. Press to press hard. There's two copies. Well, she gets the canary copy. You get a the lot of people the think golden rod that's copy. What women want, but it's not true. Here's the thing. No, of course Women not. Women are smarter than men, especially in this part of the relationship. If you are – women know yeah. when you're coming in for a kiss. They always know. And you know what? Yeah. I've had women. I try to kiss them. If they don't want to get kissed, they don't. Yeah. Okay? They will turn they their just cheek. They just turn around. They just turn the cheeks. Yeah. Or they push their hand there's away. No, they push you away. Absolutely. There's no way you can go to kiss a woman and get a kiss and she's shocked afterwards. Women are okay, but you. what he's doing wrong is he's if he has a first date, he should be getting physical as soon as possible yes. with the date, you know, because that's, you know, I mean, physical, I mean, you know, it could be, you know, putting your hand on yeah. her shoulder, or putting your hand, you know, it doesn't mean putting it on her thigh right away, but he's got to be like physical. I get her getting used to his touch and everything, and then he reaches in and kiss. It's very natural. But if you just have this, like, you're standing off from each other, and then all of a sudden you're reaching in for a kiss, that probably isn't going to necessarily work out so well. 
if you absolutely have to say something, like if he's one of those people that like he has to say, <laughs> the way to say it is, <laughs> yeah, I want to kiss you. While you're doing it, you just I want to you know, I, and then you start, and then you start. Okay, you have to do it and just make the move. You can't say, just do it. It's like, she will say, "Don't," or "Why don't you?" And that's a great if you if yeah, you want to okay. ask you just have yeah. to phrase it as a statement and you're just saying I want to kiss you right there's nothing bad about that and, and then I, you reach in and kiss her though. I see I think the physical act is important the sooner you just it's the biggest moment of tension early in a dating relationship is like does he like me does he not once you get the kiss out of the way this is my mindset and obviously he's like yeah. I'm ready to have my first kiss and like he wants trumpets to blow but you have to get it out of the way so that the tension well she you know he has he wants to respect her boundaries yeah that's what he said and here's the thing. I think the boundaries of a woman is about three feet away, like a bubble around her. Would you say it's three feet or four feet? Yeah, I think that it's six feet. That's what they decided. Six feet. Yeah, six, six feet. feet that's right. You, so it's a total exactly. of I'm sorry. What's happened is that he has conflated <laughs> consent yeah. in the bedroom with consent in something that's way earlier. And yeah, I, you know, well, I never want you to do something that the other person doesn't want. But the, here's the thing. The, in the relationship, you're the gas and the woman is the brakes. She always can say stop or I don't like that or please don't do that. And then you stop. However, yeah, I, I, I like the, 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 the um, Tantra idea. They said the boat and the pilot. The woman is the boat. Have you ever heard that one? The man is the pilot, the boat. I think that's a really cool way to look at it. I don't know what you that know? means. He's the pilot well, of the boat. How does the boat stop? You're, the man's a pilot. The man is at where it goes. The woman is actually the boat. It's where it all happens. The woman is the environment oh. where it all happens, right? Yeah, that's. I'm still confused, but it sounds great. I just don't get it. But boat and pilot. But but anyway, um, don't ask her for if you can. But if you want to say something, you can say something while you're while yeah. you're going in for it. Because I, I I think you need to make the move. You need to show. If you don't make the move, um, you're showing that you're. A coward. Mm, I don't want to say the word here. Yeah, coward. So, yeah, it's not. It's not something that she's going to really um, respect in you, honestly. There's a window for kissing for a woman. Okay, there's a w moment where she starts to go, "I want him to kiss me," and that window is not very long because it goes from no. Here's what happens. She goes, "Is no. he going to kiss me? Why isn't he kissing me? He's rejecting me. He doesn't want to kiss me." I don't want him to kiss. Yeah, him. I hate him. Yeah, there's another. There's another. It's just like the other window, which is for the physical act itself. If she wants that, and she makes the moves that she thinks make it obvious that she wants it, if you don't pick up on that pretty quickly, that sh slams shut, and that's over, and the whole thing is over. She will see so it. So you have rejection. to. So if you wait, yeah, total long, rejection of her personally. So yeah. what normally happens is that the woman wants you to kiss her. She starts making these six signals, like they're very small, like the way she moves her mouth, the way she faces right. you, and we and she pulls her hair right. back, and you don't notice it for maybe just a little minutes. silence, a little quiet for a second or two, an eye contact, a little I moment. I wonder if yeah. I should kiss her. That's when that's you when you that means you've been missing the silence that's for a while. Should. It means that she's actually done so many signs yeah. that you finally yeah. caught on. <laughs> that you need she has like a flare gun and yeah, she's putting flares in the air. So, but she thinks she is. I mean, that's yeah, the point. She, and that's she the thinks thing. she's made so, it very clear. Even if these women are sending signals, if she sends all these signals and then he goes, do I have permission to kiss you? She's going to go, what? Uh, I've been giving uh, you permission. I've been guy? sending the signals. I've been so... But sometimes women are okay with that these days because the men are so off that they kind of understand that they're kind of used to it. Okay, so the second question, this is really interesting. This is from a woman. It's not the same as the guy. Well, okay, it's very simple. It's very, very simple, very simple. How do I give a guy consent in a sexy way without making the mood serious and etc.? She says, how do I give a guy consent? The, for the big act? I think she means that. I would imagine. Oh, I want to. She didn't say I want to sleep with you. Come here, big guy. You don't have to. So <laughs> here's the secret. So women. <laughs> Doesn't have to be a whole you lot. You don't have to say a lot to a guy. <laughs> I had a girl who once said, no. me, here's the one I remember. This, I was in a, on the way home from a nightclub with a bunch of friends out. One of the girls was there and we're in line to buy French fries because we like had a lot of drinks and this is like an English thing. And she's like, I'm going to, I want, we're going to sleep together tonight, but it's not a big deal and we're never going to see each other again. Okay. And I said, okay. I don't think I ever had words like that. I couldn't even believe it. Situation. I thought she didn't like me at all. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, this went from, you don't like me yeah. to you're going to sleep with me. Yeah, fine. And I, the words hardly ever, I did see the her. word. I, I don't. Yeah, yeah. She was just confident about it. I was like, wow, that's cool. 
Like, I normally, I don't think for normal people, this is something to use words. I think, you know, well, I think all now, she has to do is put her hand on. If you live you know, in certain places, like if you live on. in certain states, I think you have to say something. Like I think you have to give affirmative consent. But it's it doesn't have to be. Does she get the goldenrod copy or the, no, I never say, remember that, the canary. You just say, I want you to penis me. And then, you know, mm -hmm. if you can just say the yeah, word, say I don't know why people are so afraid to say what they want. Like, oh, I've had women say, I want to have sex with you. I don't think it's that big of a deal. No guy is going to go gross. <laughs> right? Like, right. You just, right. that's all you have to do is say. But, but my right. point is she doesn't have to. I mean, I just think all she has to do is make a move and that's it. It doesn't have to be a big well, move either. And then one thing leads I, to another. Think, and that's but if that. she's trying to, know. if she's trying to verbalize consent, if that's what she means, then I think you don't have to make it. You can just say it like, I want to have sex. Would you like to, you know, yeah. that's all. Would you like to? Hey, come here. Let's, let's take our let's, clothes uh, off. Let's do this. Or do you want to no, see? Yeah. Uh, or you could just take your shirt here. off. Yeah. Well, to me, the odd thing is that she asked this question. I thought it's, um, yeah. Th these questions are coming from media and the news, and they're thinking, oh, I have to mm -hmm. do these things. They're very unnatural. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My wife has yeah, never given me affirmative consent. Like She's never said to me, Permission to come aboard because it's so weird. It's not a natural mm -hmm. thing to do. And she usually initiates, right? I, 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 I've had her do that. My wife has done that with me when she's had a medical thing or something, you know, and she's saying, oh, I'm ready now okay. to, to do it. You know, that's a different story. Okay. Let me think about that. My wife has initiated a lot. She's just never used the word consent, I guess I would say. No, I don't it's, ever it's a weird way of saying it. Like, I now consent. <laughs> that's a word you don't hear. <laughs> yeah. I've got one here. This guy is, um, right. the wife is really upset because the husband's about to go on a ski trip with two, two women. Guy's buddy calls him up and says, hey, let's go skiing on Saturday. He goes, okay. Then the guy goes, work emergency, I can't go. But the first guy's already, take, already booked the day off of work, so he's gotten the personal time off. Yeah, He's got the ski ticket, and he's like, well, I've already taken the time off. I want to ski. He texts everyone in his phone, hey, I'm going skiing. Who wants to go? Single woman he's been friends with forever. He says, oh, I want to come. Right, ski trip. We're just gonna drive. It's not an overnight. Is this, is a guy married? Is this guy married? Yeah, he's or is married. In a relationship? The woman goes, oh, okay. and then she okay. goes, "Oh, actually, my other friend wants to come too." The wife does not like skiing because the wife has not rented her skis for the season. The wife has a ski ticket. The wife doesn't want to take time off. Refuses to take time off to come with them. So he invited her. She goes, "I'm never gonna take time off to go skiing." She hasn't even rented skis. The guy loves his skiing. She won't go skiing with him. And it's he. She's really upset, but like. You know they have this expression like golf widows. Have you heard that expression? Yeah, this is a ski widow. This is a ski widow. I think that the woman has to play some golf with a guy. She just has to because that's his thing, and she wants to, you know, be with him. Ooh. And in this case, this uh, woman has to go ski, even if she doesn't want to. You know, I don't really like skiing, but I've gone. You know, I sit in the lodge, yeah, or you know, I you put her around. Have to actually it's cool. Ski. You can sit in the hot tub, chill in the lodge, get a massage, and it's still, and you're yeah. down there at the bottom of the hill. Yeah. I get to it right really now, very very, very foolish, and for this guy, he should not go. Should not go with two women, single women. I mean, that's just not. A good well, no, idea. one of the, women, the other women, one is married, one single, of the two women. Yeah. Well, it's not. Yeah. Here's the thing, they're just driving. Is this an overnight no. or is this a day? It's like driving in the morning to the ski place. You're not with. You're just with oh. the people in the car. Oh, then it's fine. Yeah, then that's it's what fine. I mean. He yeah, didn't plan it. It wasn't. He didn't even yeah. know until the woman goes. Oh, my friend's going to come too, because she wants a ride. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Who cares? Yeah, it would be that's different fine. if he's like, I texted two single women off of Tinder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're and it's a four day trip, you know, and we're going to stay overnight. And, I, yeah, yeah, that's a different I mean, story. I mean, I just, but I don't. I, I think that, but you have to make an effort to, um, you know, spend time with your other, uh, your partner, even if you don't really enjoy those things that much. Yeah, I think that's important. Yeah, and she's, uh, at, you don't want to. She clearly does not want to be shut skiing. out. She hasn't rented skis. He bought her the lift ticket. Unlimited. So That's she okay. She should just go. Oh, I'd love to go with you, honey. I'm going to, you know, I'll visit with some people in the lodge and just have fun. I, maybe I'll get a yeah. massage and a pedicure. You have fun on the slopes. That's all. It's all. It's very simple. Only half the very people simple. there actually do skiing, right? Right. So many well, people. I, never did. I don't, I've skied, but I don't, don't enjoy it anymore. So many, whenever I've gone, I snowboard and I mow, there's, the lodge is always full. You never come down to the lodge. The you know what else, by the way? She could do something for her husband that she likes. He likes to ski. She can be there for him when he gets back. And, you know, it's very nice. She could be uh, a wife who would be really nice. Yeah, it's just like 
golf is hard. Golf, I guess you have to sit in the clubhouse, and I guess you just drink. But lodge. Well, golf is is very very. That's um, a tougher one. Time consuming. It's the whole day. It's five. If you if you play a full round, it's like five hours, Gosh. and people just spend a lot of time. But imagine. the point is, like, what's what's yeah? But what's wrong with her? You know, being nice to her husband and taking care of his needs a little bit, yeah. and he like enjoys us. What's wrong with that? Come on. Yeah, I mean, you. All right. Okay. Well, we have time for just one more question. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see what it is. Oh, I've got a good one if you want it. Okay. All right. Let's check yours. My girlfriend says I need to get rid of my dead wife stuff. So here's the guy. They're both <laughs> around 30. His wife died. He has all of her stuff in a trunk. He opens the trunk on the anniversary of their wedding and the anniversary Does, when she died. Two days a year. He or is that her ashes in the trunk too? Or I just wanted to know. Are they I ashes don't think in the there? ashes. I think it's just like some stuff, okay. like his memories. Her stuff. belongings. He just mourns her two days okay. a year. And the the woman, the girlfriend is like, you need to throw that out. Oh, no. And I was oh, like. No, no, no. He's very. <laughs> he already had he's very, trunk. very. He's a, he, sounds like a wonderful man. He cared about his wife. He wants to honor her memory. That's part of his past. Yeah, I. I think it's wonderful. I think that, yeah, I thought it was like, he, What's he, I, to me, it's like the pictures aren't all over the house. He has them in a special box. He opens it only two days, yeah. the legit two days a year. And it's like, she's like, remember that movie? Her. Was it Whoa. Rachel? The Hitchcock movie where the woman moves in with a guy and the, the wife's, the dead wife's picture. Remember that movie? It sounds right. I mean, it, I have, you know, this movie. big mansion. Everybody's like, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, I, th- this is weird, and I, I, I think one of the things that we've lost sight of today is um, being kind to our partner and understanding them and wanting to do what they want to do. And and this man has he wants to have a day or two of remembering his wife every year, and she should be kind, understanding, and supportive of that. And that would be fantastic for him and for her. You know, it's just really a great idea whatever and and if she has something that she wants to do that's really uh he doesn't want to do like she wants to go skiing and he hates skiing and he goes with her that's part of a a partnership don't you think i don't even think it's a compromise i don't even call it a compromise by the way because it it should make you happy to support your partner and make them happy or you know whatever it is yeah so i think that's a wonderful part of a relationship it feels sometimes people think oh if I bend it all, it means I'm weak and I've lost my position in a relationship. And there's there's two things here. Like it's hard to compete with a widow or a widow. It's hard to compete with someone who's dead, right? Because all you can be with is a memory, and the memory is always going to just yeah. be the good times. It's perfect. This guy the is not. Perfect. And the guy has to. The guy went through a phase where we talk about her all the time, which you always do. But he's in the phase now where he's like, I thought he the two, right. two days a year is legit. I think that's fair. I would want to remember two days a year. Like if I died, I would want my wife to find a new father for my kids. I don't want my kids to grow up without any dad at all. Like, oh, I, I've had this discussion with my wife. I, I, like, I would, I'd like, be so happy if she found someone else. I'd be so happy if if I died and she, she found like, someone else. I've always told she her. She was that. like, "How long do you want me to wait?" I was like, "Make sh- like a hundred percent sure I'm dead." Like, you yeah. maybe a day or two. It. Don't like yeah. you know what I mean. Like, so you don't have to wait till I was like, because what if you meet a great guy at the funeral? It's fine for me, but that's how I feel about it. But. I'm not going to yeah. spend the rest of my time like seeking vengeance, but I thought this guy had a really good take I, on it. I, I want someone to be happy, you know. Yeah. It's like, not that it's happy for him that his wife died, but this is what makes him happy in some sense, honoring her memory, yeah. and she should just be all over that and be supportive of that, and that can make their marriage so much better. A- and the fact that she doesn't is also red flag, and like we're doing here today, she should just break up. She should leave him. She should leave her. You know, they should get. She a wants him to destroy Completely. the stuff. Like she's like burn the memories, yeah. so what, destroy it. See, that's just going to be a constant theme in their marriage. Everything he cares about, she's going to want him to destroy yeah. because she, you know that's that's why this is a bad sign. You can do the thing about it is we often think like my wife likes to watch movies I don't like. They're too scary for me. So what we do is I will sit not facing the TV and read a book while she's watching a scary thing. That's how we do it, and I've also found yeah. There you go. It's like it's like. Is that a compromise? My wife like watch a TV show I don't really like. Normally we just agree. And I'll just sit there, you know, on my iPad or something yeah. while we're watching. I like to be with her. You know, I don't necessarily want to watch the show. So what? Yeah, no, it's they're too scary for me, so I have to turn away. Like I just can't handle it. But we also I like yeah. um natural disaster horror movies, especially from the seventies. Those are my favorites where they just 
throw mm-hmm. puppets mm-hmm. off the top of buildings mm-hmm. and set puppets on fire. Any of sure. Those. She, sure. She did. Towering Inferno, yeah, that Side Adventure, amazing. the first one, that, that type of thing. Okay. They set mm-hmm. so many puppets on fire. Right. Or Roller Coaster, where they put all these oh, puppets yeah. in a roller coaster and turn it upside down. Yeah. I like those. Okay. So I, cool. can, so we, I always find those to watch, but I don't like ones where there's like a killer and showing stuff on screen. I hate. I don't like to watch TV by myself, and I don't want her watching TV. She doesn't like it either. So we'll, we'll just compromise, you know, that way. I mean, I said I don't really compromise, but I don't. I could go in my room and just read, but I'd like to be with her. Yeah. So I don't bother paying I attention to the TV show. Compromise is like where you're doing something do, you hate, and then she has to do something she hates in return. That's what most people do. Because I love doing things for my wife, and I think she loves doing things for me. So yeah. there's no compromising. I just want to be with her. So we watch TV. She watches the things she likes. I'm glad she likes the show. I mean... So this is the thing. This wife, she should be happy, her husband, that he can feel the morning and that there's a it's not it's not a good thing to have a loss. But there is some joy. There can be some joy in mourning somebody. Yeah, I mean, right. Wouldn't you agree? I don't know. Why. There can be some I just, deep emotional you, wellspring that could be he needs. If you were in this situation where your wife had someone before that died and twice a year she went through mm-hmm. this stuff. I would kind of, I think part of me is like, maybe I would participate. Like, tell me about him. Tell me. Oh, I would definitely. Oh, I definitely would. Yeah. It, I definitely would participate. Because it's like. Yeah. It's like her parents have passed yeah, or, you know, that sort of thing. We have a, a friend whose daughter passed. Who's yeah. a, who's a young woman. And she, we, we're always very, I mean, you just, you, you want to be supportive. We have come to the end of our hour. By the way, I don't know if you saw this. I put this stuff on. Jonathan, have you tried this stuff? This Special Forces Night Mission? Oh, so awesome. Yeah, what does it it, it, smell? I, I do it because no, it's not a smell. This is just for your uh, face to keep you have keep you looking really young. So, oh well, um, that's yeah, yeah. You know what is yeah. interesting is that we make this. Our company makes this. People always, you, I think that like white men do the least to take care of our faces, and that's why we have like the most aging issues. Because you have other people that have like a lot of routines. Women do it. Men of other. Yeah, and, and this is the the night mission one. So this is what I put on at night. It's a little greasy, but it replenishes the cholesterol in the skin that's lost as we get older. So it prevents wrinkles. And then this is this stuff's amazing. Yeah, I have a and uh, really, yeah. as you know, I'm really into my shaving routines. I'm always trying to add more. Oh yeah, because and it's not even that I get a better shave. It's just that like I like. I think as a it's more man, fun. you have to have a ritual. I actually just ordered. Um, this product used to use in my hair when I was younger, this wax that people always say, oh, it smells really good. Yeah. And I was like, why did I stop using that? What am I thinking? So I'm kind of, it's supposed to arrive next week. I ordered it like ages ago. It takes forever to arrive. It's like, we stop as, especially men, we stop taking care of ourselves. It's, how many times do women mention smell is such a big deal? Well, you know, I'm 85 years old. Do I look 85? No, you look barely a day over 82. There you go. See, I figured that. Um, yeah. So it's because I'm using this stuff. That's why. My friend said to me recently, goes, oh, I see you're leaning into the gray. I was like, I'm not leaning into it. It wasn't a decision. <laughs> I just, it's very hard. I just got this. I've never seen a guy dye his hair and it looks natural. Like it never, because when you dye no. your hair, it's always exactly one color. But my, my hair isn't gray. It's like 50 different shades. I like Billy Mays. His obvious Beard, black beard, you know, it was hilarious, yeah, it really, like you know, when he, when, he, when he was alive. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it probably was. It's, um, <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I, my beard always, if I let it grow, it'd be really gray. But, um, you know, I'm not going to dye my hair. I, the reason is, not only does it look unnatural, but it's not safe. I don't really feel that those dyes are, are healthy, so I wouldn't use them. You can never, yeah, like, there's certain things you can do. It's also like you have to figure out. Like how important different parts. I mean, also my wife is much younger than me, so I have to be very cautious. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to have rope. like you know ropey things here oh God, in my neck too soon, and I, yeah, and I don't want to have circles on my too soon. You know, they're getting there a little bit, but I think if I use this, then I'm not going to have them, and they're not getting any worse. You have so to I, be I, I, you know, fastidious. Because here's the thing: it's like this is a thing for a lot of guys. You're in a relationship, and you go, "Oh, I don't have to put an effort anymore." So I've recently switched. Like, no, no, I don't no, know no. if you've noticed. I or I just bought a ton of polos. I just switched from wearing V. I would rather wear a V-neck all day long. But I was like, you know what? I'll up, <laughs> up my game by wearing a V-neck with a tiny wow. collar on it. My wife is noticing. Like, you have to put it. I mean, where we live, it's so hot. I guess your other wife likes that, right? I did the thought of two. Fa- Can you think of anything worse than two families? No, I think I, I was wondering why that, you read about that sometimes. Like, why did the guy have two it families? What did family. he do? My, 
really? uncle at his dad's funeral. Yeah. His dad dies when he's in his 50s. The guy walks and goes, hey, I'm so-and-so. I'm from your dad's other family. So the second family knew That's about so the weird. first family. He, uh, he got, the guy got away with it for 50 years. Can't do that anymore. Uh, I mean, it's just like well, you have to – I think you have to have a lot of tra- a traveling job, right? Where you, or you say you travel like, oh, I travel three days a week. Yeah, you have to have a traveling job. Just, yeah, it's got yeah. To, it's good to have a wealthy wife too. If there, she's wealthy, it's a lot better. There has to be a particular thing about you that really likes two families. Because if you want two families, why not three? I don't know. Why would you want? Why not just yeah. have more? Maybe Where's the, the limit? Really, maybe really. If one wife doesn't want kids, I guess. But it just feels like so much work. Like I saw a TV show about it. And the guy like and for what? Cars, what's the purpose? He goes through really? process, what is the purpose? He checks all his pockets like like a spy. You know, and you switch to your new identity. And it's a whole thing. And it's just like, <laughs> it's very funny. Or a phone booth, yeah, he whatever goes, it goes is. He goes through his pockets. He makes sure he, doesn't, he has different driver's license. Everything's different, right? Because there's a different address on it. It's right. a huge, huge amount of work. I mean, it's too bad he found out after his dad had died because I would love to have just been like, why? So much work. Thank you so much. Uh, by the way, if you love this podcast, please um, subscribe. Um, we're now distributing out on Apple and um, Spotify and other podcast platforms as well as YouTube. So like and subscribe. Write us a comment. Tell all your friends about us. Send us huge amounts of money. Buy all these products because you'll love them. Um, and uh, send us questions if you want. And um, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.